Hello again, welcome to part 2 of this tutorial on how to create an RPG from scratch. In the last tutorial we began making the water texture for um, the ocean and we had already completed this here nice little graph graphics um, for the for the grass tiles and uh, today or for this tutorial at any rate we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna complete this here uh, this here water texture or the water tile and uh, we'll if we have enough time we'll go ahead and get into the transitionary tiles and um, really we'll kind of get into why they're necessary um, it's probably fairly intuitive for most of you guys why the, the the transitionary tiles are, are necessary but um, we'll go into a little bit more detail but at any rate let's just continue what we did was um, we filled this tile here with the blue background for the water and we began making these little bubble shapes on here for to represent the variation and we'll just go ahead and continue that in this tutorial like so and it, it's very intuitive I mean it's not really all that graphics intensive you don't have to be a graphics artist really to to build this type of tile I mean like all you, as you can see it's just adding little variation to the tile here and there and, and just making it look not so generic because no blue water and in, 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 in the real life um, is, is all one color it actually kind of looks like it has variation so we just add these little variations to our our texture to try to make it mimic real life so um, as you can see I went ahead and I um, drew all these little bubble looking things on here and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill those in for the most part with the same color so that it looks uh, looks a little bit better here and we'll fill these in like this like that and this doesn't have to be perfect I mean like I said this is definitely not a an exact science I mean all we're doing is is making a, a water texture and um, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out, basically. But um, it, a lot of it's experimentation too. It's it's just getting a, an intuitive feel for what you really want to 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 present the experience you want to present. And what we're trying to present here is the illusion of water in our in our RPG game. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go back to the filters here, like we did before, and we'll, we'll let's experiment with the blur. Let's see how it looks like with the blur now kind of looks uh, interesting but let's let's just do a little experimentation so the blur let's say we're not completely satisfied with the blur so we just hit the undo button which is control Z on GIMP it's real nice and easy and uh, let's let's experiment with some of these others because I've never really used these other um, filters before um, this here let's see what this does here uh, it's a little bit more looks a little bit more pixelized to me doesn't look as good as the the regular blur filter let's see if we can do anything else let's see pixelization that looks like it's going to be really pixelized and I'm not really satisfied with that so much see it doesn't look very good so we'll undo that and let's just go with the regular blur because it seems to have worked for for us thus far and uh, we can really this is zoomed way in I mean in the game the tiles are probably going to be about that big let's say and uh, that actually doesn't look too terribly bad. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, go under filters and under map dialog and let's make this object seamless and that'll create a little bit more variation there as you can see. And uh, let's zoom this out a little bit and let's take a look and see what our water texture looks like. I think there's a little bit maybe a little bit too much white in that to be honest with you guys so I'm gonna undo that and undo that to get it back to regular like what we had here and I'm gonna add another color of blue let's add some aqua blue in there um, to give it a little bit more variation instead of all this white I think it might look good with a little bit more aqua and that looks like a good aqua to me and what we'll do is we'll just add some aqua pixels into these guys here and all this does is just add some variation to the to the texture it makes it look a little bit more interesting so to speak and let's add some darker aqua to represent maybe some some darker parts of the water some green maybe you know just 
you got to just kind of experiment and whatever looks good i mean it'll probably be acceptable anyway i mean to most people blue is water especially when it's near green and it'll create a good enough illusion to to be believable and uh that's really what you're going for is it's just making it a believable illusion that um we have uh that we have uh water and that's really all, all all it boils down to is is creating a good illusion so now we have this let's add the blur filter back to it and like that and that looks a little bit more interesting i'd say let's zoom out and get a really good idea for it and we'll add the the make seamless filter on there as well and when we zoom out even more um it doesn't look too bad I think there's still a little bit too much white so I'm gonna go and go back like this and let's go back to this darker blue that we have we could actually use this here tool this is a color picker tool and you can select that which will give you the exact color this is on here and we go back to our pencil tool and I want to make that just maybe a little bit a little bit lighter and let's say let's put it right there and, and let's just kind of outline these sort of in a random way here and uh, what this will serve to do is kind of cut out the, the high contrast of these too much white I think there's just a little bit too much white in, in the texture itself when it's blurred so this will serve to kind of kind of merge that in and, and make it a little a little bit more believable let's just say but like i said a lot of it's experimentation you'll start to get a good enough feel for this once you've done it a while i mean I, i'm this is really actually my second or third time actually doing um textures in this manner with gimp i'm still new to it but it's fairly intuitive and it's uh like i said gimp is a very powerful tool for for creating this types of this type of, of graphics and um, and it's really it's a matter of practice making perfect uh, as in anything in life really so we got all these guys here and I'm kind of rushing this a little bit because uh, I don't want to spend the whole video experimenting because you guys can get the idea of this and uh, it, it really to, to get good at it you gotta you gotta do this stuff yourself I mean there's no doubt about that but what we have here is an interesting looking confetti mixture but we'll go ahead and blur that again that looks a little bit better i think that the transition you can see here the transition between the white and the blue is a little bit better and, and i actually i think that looks pretty nice with the little specks of of greenish aqua in there and let's go ahead and we'll go back to map and we'll make this object seamless again and uh let's zoom out and see what we have now it still looks a little little white but i think that it looks a little bit better maybe um so let's go ahead and see how this would look um if we went ahead and copied it and pasted it so we go ahead and do this just like we did with the tile i mean this is exactly how the um compiler would stamp these together now this C here, obviously you would have your land transition up into the the tiles for the for the water, and that makes sense because water touches land, obviously, and in, in the game it's no different. But what we have here is a need for what's called transitionary tiles. Now I wanted to let you get a look at this without the grid, so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. You keep the snap to grid feature on we want to not show the grid so as you can see um really what we have here is is uh, uh you got your grass here but in in the real world if you look at maps or even if you go on google and look at the google satellite images you'll notice that in, in nature these straight lines especially transitioning from water to land it's really it doesn't occur in nature so when you have such a a a representation of of the real world that has these straight lines like this it, it makes the world look very artificial especially um in this context but um this is actually zoomed way into i mean 
um, when you're looking at it from your from your video game perspective you probably have a perspective about like this and as you can see the water looks fairly like water especially when it's right up next to the green grass here and uh, well really what we want to do is create a transitionary tile so I'm gonna go back to um, view and we're gonna show our grid again and we'll zoom in here so what we want to do is transition between the grass and the water and we want this transition instead of having a straight line we want it to be nice and jaggedy and and and, and kind of um, random I mean really that's what it's all about as I've been um, um, emphasizing all along it's all about random curves and random placement to make it look vast it's an illusion of, of, of a vast world that's natural but using the same tiles over and over again because obviously you can't um, save an entire world map because that would take up too much memory especially um, in, in this case I'm, I'm planning on targeting the the mobile phone market so um, we really need to emphasize um, storage efficiency and we do that by creating these textures so right now I mean you could create a pretty big world with just this because we have grass and we have uh, ocean here but like I said I mean um, well, we'll take this for example here we can go like this and select this blue tile here the, the ocean tile copy it and paste it and what you would have is these straight lines and that's something as we discussed you don't see these straight lines in, in nature it just doesn't look right and it wouldn't look right it wouldn't look natural in the game to have this be your continent because of these straight lines in here but already it looks pretty pretty phenomenal and we only have two 54 by 54 um, pixel textures and we can already create this vast world um, with just two textures and that's the beauty of the tiling system and and especially with the old NES games I mean you figure it was a cartridge and I forget how much memory I think is that the, the cartridges had a flash memory of like some 2.5 megabytes or something like that it's ridiculously small and uh, that necessitated this tiling feature especially in creating an enormous seemingly enormous world in 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 the game itself so what we'll do here is um in the next video we're, we're going to work on the transitionary tiles to clean up these straight lines and make it look a lot more natural and we're adding a couple more 54 by 54 pixel tiles but that's all well worth it because in the end it'll make our world look much more natural and and, and um, it'll make it look more believable the illusion of the the actual world will be greater which it actually adds to the immersion of the game it really does in, in all actuality but that's uh that's about where we're at right now and uh i hope it looks good uh, i mean it looks good to me because i'm really not a graphics artist at all i mean i'm really winging it and like i said this is about my second or third time attempting this type of project and i'm hoping to see it through all the way to the end this time and hopefully you guys will motivate me enough to to keep um keep going with this especially if you're interested i'd definitely appreciate it if you could like it and uh subscribe if you do like the videos and uh Tell your friends, man, because it should be full of really, really good stuff. All right. Thank you, guys.